over to Lindsay, our instructor for class. Thank you so much. I've started recording. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm trying not to get nervous seeing the numbers of how many people are hanging out. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to paint along with me today. And thanks to Michael and Derwent for bringing us all together because uh, that's that's so fun. That's so fun. A nice way to spend an afternoon. We're going to be using the Derwent watercolor pencils. And a lot of you asked if you could use the ink tents and that is totally fine. As you know, I always say, use what you have. And um, we're going to get started here in just a second. If you have questions as we're going along, you can pop, uh, post your questions in the chat and Molly from Derwent will relay them to me unless one of you, um, you know, fast typers get to answer first, I guess. And we're just gonna have a good time and this should take about an hour. So if you've got your supplies all laid out and ready to go, we're gonna start painting. Um, I wanna let you know that if you don't already, if you're an Instagram user, you can follow Derwent on Instagram. The US site is Derwent underscore US and they actually have monthly giveaways of full size supplies. So um, it's definitely worth a follow over there and you might score yourself some goodies and at least be inspired by all the wonderful artwork they post. So um, make sure you check that out. There'll also be information in the chat where you can upload your artwork to your favorite social media and tag Michaels with the hashtag make it with Michaels, right Kelly? Is that the name of it? Give me a thumbs up, awesome. And um, then they can have a look at that too and maybe even share your art. So that would be exciting, wouldn't it? Uh, so without further ado, let's go to the table and start painting together. Oh, right. I have the squeakiest chair in the world, so I apologize if you hear any squeaks and creaks. This is our finished artwork, and there's also a photo of that on the Michael's class page if you don't finish in class and you want to go back and refer to that. I've taped down my watercolor paper on all four sides. Using watercolor pencils, it's not absolutely necessary that you do that, but it will help you keep your paper flatter as you're working, and it gives you a really pretty white border when you're done, which you know, let's face it, that's the reason I do it because I love that white border. It makes me feel like it's all framed. I've already transferred my sketch onto my paper with a waterproof pen. If you don't have a waterproof pen, you could do it with regular pencil, do your coloring, and then at the end, go over it with whatever black pen you have. A felt tip pen will work a little bit better. Um, but if you have waterproof pen, it's nice to do it at the start of it. We're going to start off with a nice blue. This is spectrum blue, but if you have a sky blue that you like, you could certainly use that. Now, if you're using the ink tense pencils instead of the watercolor pencils, you're probably going to want to go a little bit lighter with your coloring. See how I'm holding my pencil at the end? I'm not putting a lot of pressure here. These are good quality pencils and they're going to give you plenty of pigment. But just keep in mind, if you're using ink tense, they are like ink. They are super, super bright. So what I like to do is uh, go firm, a little more firmly at the top of my paper. I'm skipping over the birch trees. And then as I work down towards the, um, the tree line here, I'm gonna go lighter. Hey, Lindsay, what blue are you using? I am using number 32, a spectrum blue. Okay. It's kind of and like then a, someone else, a, a couple other people were asking about the painted barrels. Um, most of the watercolor and the ink tense barrels should be painted um, dark blue with the color on the tip. For those of you that have a full color pencil, I'm not quite sure um, what those look like. If you guys wanna message me privately, I could take a look, but it could just be a previous version of the pencil or a previous formulation, depending on I have how a set from the. I have a set from the 90s that have um, a light gray barrel. Maybe that's what they have. I did compare okay. them and there's only minor differences in a few of the colors between the old and new Derwent uh, versions. So go ahead, if you've got the older set, that's gonna work fine. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is take a nice flat brush. I'm gonna use a one inch. You don't have to use one this large, but um, that's what I'm gonna use. Now, when you're wetting your brush, try not to get water up in the ferrule. You really don't need that. You just need to get the bristles wet. And one of the reasons I try to avoid getting water up here is you'll get beads of water and then they can slide down the brush and um, mess up your, your painting because you'll get big blobs of water. So you just wanna get enough so that you can dilute it. And I'm just gonna bring the water down and I'm gonna go around some of the trees, but I'm gonna go over where the evergreens are, but I'm gonna go around where the deciduous trees are. 
and we get a very lovely ombre look. And the reason you don't want to use a lot of pressure when you're using your watercolor pencils is because you can actually dent the soft surface of your watercolor paper and then it can be difficult to dilute it. I'm using very little water, very little pressure, and it's diluting it just fine. So if you've had issues where you can't get your pigment to dissolve, you might be pressing too hard. And sometimes when you have a, um, like a budget set of pencils, you'll have to press harder to get the color payout that you want. So um, if you have a budget set of pencils and you determine that you use like maybe five or six of those colors all the time, you can always take those colors, swatch them out, and then purchase colors that are similar in a line like Derwent where they're better quality pigments. That way you know what you use, you know what you like, and then you can kind of upgrade the ones that might not be performing the way you'd like. Now I'm gonna also, with a light pressure, fill in the water area. I'm going around the rocks. And now you really wouldn't have to go around the rocks if you were like maybe sketching outside and you didn't wanna draw beforehand, you could actually just scrub the rocks out later. But um, since I've already sketched them in, I'm gonna go around them. And if you're using the ink tense pencils, you're not gonna be able to scrub out that, um, uh, that initial color. So that's another reason I wanted to sketch it out first, especially if you're using the ink tense. All right, so I'm also gonna pull in some other colors. I'm gonna bring in, um, cause I know I'm gonna do some foliage with different reds and, and oranges. So I've grabbed a deep vermilion. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of color here and there with that. And if you're nervous about doing this, you can always wait and do this bit later. I tried to keep hey, my Lindsay, Yes. Did you use the same color for the water as you did for the sky? Did you use the same yes. blue? Great question, yes. And you want to do that because your water is going to reflect your sky color. So you've got to make sure that you get some of that, um, that same sky color in your water. It just doesn't look quite as bright because we haven't added the water to it yet. And for anyone that said it's going too fast, don't, don't panic. It will be replayed tomorrow. It's just we have an hour to get through this entire lesson. So it's okay. Just sometimes I think it's easier to watch along and then go back and replay. That's a great tip. A lot of uh, a lot of my viewers on YouTube do that as well. They watch it once through and then they um, they paint along later. This is lemon cadmium and I'm going through and just adding a little bit here and there. And the wonderful thing about a landscape corner, we're going to have lots of colors, is that you don't have to be really specific with where you're putting these reflections down because we're going to have so many bursts of little colors here and there that that we can pull from. And then finally, I'm going to add a little bit of this, uh, this grass green, number 47. And we can always adjust and add more later. So then I'm going to take my half inch flat because it will be a little more nimble to get around those smaller areas. Again, I'm just going to wet the tip. Sometimes I, I just double check by wiping it on my tissue to make sure I cleaned my brush well the last time I used it. And I'm using the chisel edge. So I am applying water by keeping my brush flat, but I'm squiggling it back and forth. So really I'm not using the broad side of the brush. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's gonna help me get um, uh, more of a flowy look. It's gonna make it look more like the ripple pattern in the water because it will kind of, uh, it'll liquefy, it'll lift and it will push and give me very, very subtle ripples. And when I'm painting, um, even with watercolor and not watercolor pencil, other than just getting around areas, I do that because it gives me a much more natural look with very little effort. I find with watercolor pencils and watercolor crayons and watercolor sticks, those uh, mediums that you kind of draw down first and then you would liquefy, that using flats and filberts to be much more um, useful and versatile for breaking up the pigment than using rounds. Rounds tend to bring in more water and often wash out your colors. So if you've struggled with your watercolor pencils, but you've been using like maybe a round water brush or just a regular round brush, that might be why you're having some, uh, some trouble. So just, just give a flat brush a go and I bet you'll be surprised and pleased with how well it works. 
All right, we'll let this layer dry. We will put some more on there to bring up the intensity of the color, but this is just gonna, um, this is gonna be our first layer. And you wanna let this dry before you draw over it. Otherwise you're going to get really dark inscribed lines that will not dissolve, which may be an effect you like, but for this water, we wanna be able to control a little bit. So now we're going to start on the evergreen trees back here. And my sky is dry, but if you want, you can always take a heat tool or hair dryer, blast it really quick, make sure everything's dried up so you don't inscribe lines. But with the small amount of water we're using, it should dry pretty quickly for us. I'm going to start off with uh, mineral green. I'm going to start off just by kind of filling in the area over our puffy deciduous leaves. I love this scene. It reminds me of, um, of fall in Maine. We get all these gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Now, if you feel like your pencil is not releasing pigment, it could be that your paper is a little damp and it's just uh, almost skipping. What can happen sometimes when you color on the damp paper is that you actually can flatten the tooth down and then, um, and then it's really hard for your pigment to stick because it needs those little bumps and ridges on the paper to stick. The rougher the paper, it acts almost like sandpaper and it will grab more pigment off your pencils. Get a few over here. And let's see, that's going to be deciduous. So don't need to add on that. Now I'm going to take this. Uh, this one is cedar green. It's just kind of like a desaturated warmer green. And I'm just going to kind of put in some streaky upward lines, vertical lines here, kind of around where the center of the trees that I sketched would go. Don't be shy with the pigment if you're using the watercolor pencils. We do want a dark value here, that dark value, this cool dark value is going to push it back so that we have this depth in our scene. That's why we have the brighter, more warmer deciduous foliage in here because that will come forward, it will advance. You wanna uh, take that, uh, take advantage of that color theory. All right, I think I'm gonna stick with that flat brush, but if you wanted to go to your smaller filbert, if that's more comfortable, you can go ahead. I generally try to use the largest brush I can for the job and not a lot of water. We don't wanna wash away this pigment. We just want to liquefy it. And I think that's what happens a lot too when people are using watercolor pencils for the first time is they put so much water on there that they end up washing half of it away. Your water bucket should not really have much color in it when you're done. It should be almost as clear as when you started. And don't mind my stomach grumbling if you just heard that. <laughs> it's lunchtime here. So I'm just kind of like dabbing, pushing and dragging it up. Now remember when I said don't go over don't go over your your area with a um, when it's wet. Well, there is an exception. Sometimes you want to have that darker color. I'm gonna just sharpen this really quick to uh, a point. Use my hand sharpener so I don't give you guys a headache if you're listening with headphones with a loud electric sharpener. You always want to sharpen it before you use it on wet paper because you don't want to. Um, do that when the tip is weak. But I can throw in some more color on the damp paper. It's actually not even that damp anymore. It's drying pretty quickly. And I can add those darker, darker areas if I want to. Another thing I can do is gently, and be sure to only hit the, the uh, pigment, not the wood. I can gently touch the tip of the pigment and I can put some really dark pigment in that way. So if you've got an area you just want to accentuate just pigment only, not, the, not down to the wood, you can add a little bit of water that way. 
you don't want to get the wood wet because then you could end up having some cracks in the wood. So, you know, if you don't, you don't have to do that. That might be a little, a little risky for some, but I like to do that. And another thing I like to do is treating this like a watercolor pan. And I'm using my number four filbert here. Um, I will just wet the tip here and I'll pick up pigment. Now, as long as you're just getting the, the pigment wet, you're not going to harm your pencil. And then I can add even more intense color and just kind of drag it up. It's just a great way that um, these are so versatile. And if you have like uh, the intense blocks, you totally could just use them like a pan of paint and um, do the same thing and not have to worry about avoiding the, uh, the wood. Some of my absolute favorite watercolor pencils were put out by Derwent and um, I would love it if they came back, but they were called Aquatone and they were just like a stick of the, um, the, the pencil lead. And it was just so awesome because it had so much color and you wouldn't have to worry about <laughs> getting the wood wet if you're using it. That would be so fun to see that one come back. But the Inktense blocks are pretty darn comparable. All oh, right, I'm liking the depth of color there. It's a cool undertoned green, so it's pushing it back. And we can do the same thing over here. We'll first liquefy what we've got. Then we can go in if we want to add some, some just upward strokes that will look like trees far away. And then we can do a little bit of water on the pigment and paint on some darker areas. Now, if you're using ink tents, one of the nice things about ink tents is that if you're painting the trees in front and you accidentally get water on the trees in back, it's not going to harm anything. It's going to keep it, um, it's not gonna lift it. So that would be the benefit to the ink tents being not liftable. All right. We're going to grab some of the, I think it's the vermilion, the deep vermilion. And again, on its edge, go in and lay down some pigment. And you can bounce around. If you prefer um, more yellow, you can use more yellow in yours. If you like more red, Use more red if you like more orange, use more orange. It's completely your call, whatever you like the most of. You could do this in shade of shades of green if you wanted to have a spring scene. It's totally up to you. My favorite color is red, so I love to get a lot of red in on my landscapes and whenever I can. And sometimes I'll even draw with red underneath, like you could do that with ink tents. You could do an underpainting or an underdrawing with red or violet, and then do your painting with watercolor pencils on top and still retain those really bold, beautiful colors underneath. And using the different products together make them more versatile. Now I've got this uh, Crimson Lake, which is more of like a berry red. It's like kind of almost like your Christmas holly berry red. I'm going to add that to some of these oranges. I sharpened that one a little too pointy on my electric sharpener and the little tip broke off. I also want to get this up here where I have the sky painted because if I had just orange there, it might get a little muddy. So I'm going to get that berry crimson color up there. Now, if you feel like you don't have control when you're hold your pen, holding your pencil back there, you can hold it closer to the tip. Just try not to scratch lines. You don't want to be pressing so hard that you're making lines in your paper. It should be pretty, um, it should be pretty gentle and gradual. All right, and now I'm going to grab some warm yellow. This one is called Deep Cadmium. That's a nice soft pencil. It's really laying down lots of pigment.
warm colors make the scene come forward. So it's a great way to be able to get some depth in our, in our artwork here. And now I'm gonna grab some grass green and get the tops of these little bushes right around the water. It always seems like the, um, the bushes that are around the edge of a stream are the last to turn. I think it's because they're getting more reflected light off the water. And also they're getting a steady supply of water and they're not, um, they're not kind of drying out like the ones further away. And when you're going behind a tree element, try to carry that color over a bit so it doesn't look like that tree just abruptly stops behind a uh, behind something else. You want it to kind of flow gradually. Like that, how that stops behind that tree, that's probably not the best idea. I should probably bring some of this over. I might have to do that with like a um, wetting my brush and laying it down on top to get a little more opacity. This guy was supposed to be a dark yellow or deep cadmium. All right, now let's go for some of the cedar green. Get that right down next to the rocks. So when you get these puffy uh, bushes, we're putting this green kind of behind them on some of them to kind of give them a little bit of a uh, little bit of depth. And to keep your pencil sharp as you're working, simply just turn them um, in your grip so that you'll be hitting another edge and that will keep them pretty sharp as you go. You really don't need to sharpen your watercolor pencils that often unless you need to like scribe a, um, a fine line somewhere. And that will make it so that you are actually getting the most for your money. You are using up all of that, uh, that beautiful pigment. Now this is the mineral green again. I'm kind of going over the cedar and bringing it up into the grass green. Kind of, it's kind of like an overlapping bridging color. You can even sharpen these with a with like a craft knife and just whittle the wood away and then have the pigment sticks exposed and just use the pigment that way, especially if you like to use the brush method. So many different ways that you can use this versatile medium. I'm going to take a little bit of that color back here behind this tree. I think that'll help bridge those areas together a bit. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little of this light yellow, the lemon cadmium, and just get on the tips of some of these really bright grass green bushes to give them that kind of um, really well uh, watered, fresh look. And then we're gonna use our filbert brush. And I'm just dipping the, the, uh, the bristles and kind of scraping off the extra water on the edge of the jar that I'm using. And when you liquefy this, you wanna keep the colors uh, in mind. So I'm gonna do all of the reds first and then I'll rinse and then I'll do all of the yellows, then I'll rinse and I'll do all the greens because if I go right from red to green, I'm gonna get mud, I'm gonna get brown. So I want to keep all the colors, do all the colors together, you know, all the same colors together. And another reason I like to do that rather than rinse between every single, you know, you know, finish up this and then go to that is because my brush, any, any pigment that it picks up is gonna be on that brush. And rather than waste it in my rinsing pot, I'll just bring it to the next area that's using that same color. It's just a habit I've always been in, but it makes my pencils last a long time. Hey, Lindsay, a couple of people are asking about just what kind of brushes you're using. Mm -hmm. What can I use if I don't have this, this or that brush, et cetera. Can you just talk about that for maybe a couple minutes? 
Absolutely. This one is well loved. I've got uh, almost everything is rubbed off of it, but this is a number four filbert and this is the Royal and Langnickel uh, Majestic line. And Royal and Langnickel has uh, three different lines of brushes that are very affordable, but I highly recommend. Actually, they have more than that. Um, and I do believe you can find them at Michael's. There is the Majestic line. There is the Zen line. And there is the Menta line. And those brushes all are available in value packs or also individually. And I think they're a couple dollars a piece. They're definitely under $5 a piece. And um, I like them because they're a golden Taclon synthetic brush. They don't hold too much water and they've got a little bit of a firmness, which is really good for diluting your watercolor pencils. Um, and they're synthetic, so you don't have to worry about animals being harmed for your brushes. They're very resilient. They hold up very well. I've had these Majestics for several years and they're very affordable. A filbert has a rounded tip, but a flat ferrule. So this is a flat brush. A flat brush is this flat area there, and that keeps all of your bristles kind of firmly packed together. A round brush, I'm gonna get a, grab a larger round brush just for an example. Well, I can show you a larger fill, but this will be a little bit easier to see. It's got a flat ferrule there, um, but a rounded tip. So this is a filbert. This is just a bigger one of these. Brush. Grab this one. A round brush has a round ferrule, so the brush, the bristles will be a little bit floppier. Okay, and it's harder to push your paint around and you get more water. So if you're doing watercolor, having a round brush is very versatile. But when you're doing watercolor pencil, watercolor crayon, stuff like that, you will almost get too much water and it almost washes away the pigment. So I recommend a flat or filbert for the most part, unless you're doing little details. Any of the Royal and Landigal Golden Tacklon brushes are wonderful. They even have ones with soft grips on them. They're called soft grip. And I also think Michael Car Michaels carries those as well, but they're probably sold where they sell the, um, the craft paints because they're more designed for acrylic painters, but they are perfect for using with your watercolor pencils. We actually just got a Michaels in our uh, near in the city near us and we hadn't had one before. So it's very exciting. <laughs> to look around there and see what they have. I hope that answered the question. I'm gonna go on to the yellows. And I can blend that down into the green so I get a pretty ombre effect. Trying to keep the hand out of the way. So when I redip my brush, I'm just trying to get the ends of the bristles wet. I don't want to rinse out any pigment that I've already picked up when I'm staying in the same color family. Look at that rich ombre, isn't that pretty? If you enjoy rubber stamping or adult coloring book work, this is a wonderful technique for that because you're not putting too much water on. You're just putting enough water to liquefy and activate those colors. And if you look at that blend there, that is a blend that people will um, practice and practice and practice to get with say Copic markers. And it's very challenging. Um, you and, and Copic markers are very expensive. You can do that with a couple watercolor pencils that are gonna never dry out. They're gonna last you a long time and they're a lot easier to control. I like markers too, don't get me wrong, but they are definitely not as easy as watercolor pencils. And I'm tapping as I do this, just so I can get a little texture while I'm at it. <coughs> Excuse me. I should probably show you my water pots off screen. When I'm, when I'm dipping in there, I'm literally just the tip of that brush in the water. I'm not sure if you can really see that. Just barely making a ripple there. Barely breaking the surface tension of the water. And since I did that a couple times in a row, I probably got more than I needed, but. And I'm dabbing just to keep that texture going. Try to keep your birch trees white. When I actually designed the painting, I started off just taping a couple, sticking a couple pieces of masking tape down and just kind of freehanding. 
And uh, that's a lot of times how I do my masking, my uh, birch trees, if I'm not going to ink it first. So that's a fun way to start. If you're ever stuck in a, like, I don't know what to paint moment, take some masking tape, just put it across your paper, tear it, tear the edges so it's rough and, um, and just start painting a uh, landscape around it. It's so fun and it looks so good. I'm gonna hop up to the screen I have up here. Dabbing as I go. Might as well get this texture done while we're painting it in the first place so we don't have to go back in and add more. You can also go in and add more details if you decide that, um, that you didn't have enough detail the first go around. So I just rinsed my brush. So I just went and I gave it a good rinse. This is a paint pot. It's got, it's a water pot that's got little textures on the bottom that knock the pigment out of your brush. And then I'm wiping the handle of my brush because I know that I'm gonna have drops of water on there. And I do not want them surprising me on my artwork. I'm gonna go in and get this spot done here because I missed it. and just check for any other spots that I haven't liquefied yet. I think I did okay. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put our rocks in. Now, I love painting rocks. Rocks are one of my favorite landscape subjects and I love to get a lot of different colors in here. So you can see, I have some like yellow ochre colors. I've got some pinks, I've got some grays. Um, I've got all sorts of different tones going in here. And I generally will kind of pick up from other things I've done in the landscape. So I'm gonna start off with uh, this raw sienna. So you can use raw sienna or yellow ochre. And I'm just gonna throw some of this on my rocks here and there. Don't color every bit in. Just kind of pretend the sunlight is just hitting the rocks. They're just hitting, it's just hitting the faces of the rock that's kind of reaching up to the sun. Here and there, not a lot. You can always add more. And then in my shadowy areas, I'm going to put in some blue gray and you can use um, you can use whatever gray that you have. Go real light with this though because it's pretty strong. Now this is really effective to put where the water where the rock is um, on the edges that are touching the water because your rocks are going to be darker where they're wet. So you want to get those um, those edges as they sit next to the water. Now, another thing you can do while you're at it is actually strike in some shadows in the water. So it's really important when you're doing this in the water that you do take the pencil direction into account. So snug it right up to the bottom of that rock, make it nice and dark and then flick it, flick it out like a ripple. Move that whole arm. You're like, move your, your arm from like shoulder out if you can. Just kind of get a, get a full range of moving your whole hand there if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. Darkest area right up against the rock and flick it out. And give us some depth and it's going to give a place for these rocks to sit in the water. All right, I'm gonna grab some of the, um, the spectrum blue and I'm gonna go over those shadows, just kind of um, go over and feather them out a little bit so that when we do add water, that gray won't be like, where'd that come from? It's gonna be mixed. So instead of mixing this on a palette, like we would if we were, doing like a regular watercolor, mixing it on a palette and then bringing it over with our brush. We're just gonna overlap our pencils now. And when we liquefy them, we will get that mixing on the paper. And if you wanna throw in any fun other ripples with this brush or this pencil, sorry, while you're at it, you can do that. I know I want more color in the water, so I'm just doing that now. You can also add little bits of very, very lightly, not a lot, 
You can add some little bits of blue onto your rocks. Think of it as reflecting, maybe near the gray. It's like reflecting on the wet rock area. We'll also be um, adding some of our crimson. And as that mixes in, it'll give us very lovely purple tones. Very, very light. We don't want rainbow rocks, but we do want, um, we do want to get some subtle colors in here. We're going to end up with neutrals though, because as these colors mix and blend, they're going to desaturate each other. And that's how we're going to get some lively yet neutralized rocks. Um, let's see, I think that's probably pretty good. I'm not sure if we have enough, enough color on there, but we won't really know until we add our color. And I'm going to go back to the one inch flat brush for that. You can't fuss too much with a one inch flat brush. Dry off my ferrule. And this time I'm going to go with random strokes. Oh, I just love painting rocks. Aren't they pretty? Now see, if it's a little too dark, you can lift it up and then you can either wipe it on your rag, but if you think you might want it somewhere else, go ahead and move it somewhere else. But if you got too much pigment and you don't like it, rinse your brush off, clean it off, you can go in and you can lift it. Now, if you're using ink tents, you wanna do this quickly because once that, paper, once that ink tents pencil dries, it's permanent. So if you are working with the ink tents and it gets a little out of hand, then go ahead and, um, and lift it right away. But if you remember nothing from today's lesson, remember to make sure there's no beads of water on the ferrule of your brush, because that just leads to a lot of heartache. Now, as I'm doing this, I might say, hmm, no, you know red's my favorite color, so I might be like, I really want some pink in those rocks. So I can go ahead, I can just pick up a little bit off the tip. And I can add some in there. You might not like red in your rocks. You might think that's a little tacky or too bold. And that's fine. You don't have to do it because it's your artwork. And that's the most important thing about your artwork is it should look like your artwork and not look like my artwork or anybody else's artwork. Because here we get these pretty colorful neutrals. You can almost treat the clumps of rocks as one rock, you know, like just kind of a wiggle your brush and smear the paint around. We have the definition from our pen lines that we really don't have to, you know, worry too much about um, exact colors. And then while I'm at it, while I've got this brush in my hand, again, wipe off the ferrule. I'm going to go ahead and do my chisel edge side to side strokes and liquefy my shadows and that extra blue that I put in there. Now, your goal is not to cover everything you've already painted. Your goal is to, you're kind of just adding ripples. You know, you're liquefying that, those streaks that we put in there and you're dragging them over. So we're going to have a couple layers of color. You're going to have that first layer that we put down that kind of covered everything. And then you're having the layers that are the ripples on top. And that's going to help us build up luminosity in the water. And I'm just wetting the tip of that brush, like trying to just get the bottom third of that brush with the water, really. Because having too much water can be quite an enemy of our watercolor pencils. If too much, you're going to end up lifting and washing away your beautiful pigment. Now, sometimes you get an area, it's like, I don't like how abrupt those like streaks just kind of stop right there. So what I'm going to do is wet my brush, grab some blue off the tip, try not to touch the wood. Ooh, that's so nice and bright. That's really bright. So I'm going to spread that around a little bit. My 
stomach is rattling. Oh, I like that so much. I'm going to do it in some other places. Oh, here's another tip. Um, so maybe you're not like crazy about uh, potentially wetting your brush, wetting your pencil. If you've got like taped your paper down with masking tape, masking tape's a little rough. You can actually color your, um, your pencils there on the masking tape. And you can use it like a paint palette, which is just so nice. And then if you're nervous about wetting the tip of your, of your pencil, because I know they can be expensive, you know, when you're investing in the quality air supplies, that we don't even have to worry about that. And then I can just go in and I can use it just like a, a pan of watercolor and get that real painterly look that's so pretty. Now those stronger, the stronger designs, the stronger ripples. I have another fall landscape watercolor tutorial on my YouTube channel. You can just search watercolor pencil fall landscape tutorial and I'm sure it will come up um, using the Derwent pencils. It was actually using my original set from the 90s. So if you guys have the gray barrel pencils, you probably will recognize them. And so I can attest that they do not go bad. They will last till you use them up. So don't be, don't be shy about using them either. Don't be like, well, they're precious. I got to save them for best. They're so, so slow wearing that use them, enjoy them. You bought them to use them, not so that, you know, somebody can use them after buying them for 10 cents in a yard sale after you're gone. You should be the one that gets to use these beautiful supplies that you bought and paid for. And darken that in there. I like that. All right, and remember, you can layer up more later too if you're undecided on how how light or dark you want that. All right, I'm going to grab some of the this brown here. It is Copper Beach, and also when I uh, scribble on my masking tape, I turn my pencil so I keep that nice point in case I need that for something else. And I think I'll add a little bit of that to some of my rocks too. A little bit of uh, a little bit of brown here and there. Especially around the, the shore, because around the shore you often will have mud. Rocks can get a little bit grimy near the shore. Up a little bit more of that gray too. You can mix the gray with the brown for a nice dark, almost um, almost like a black, but softer and more more natural. I didn't choose a black pencil for this project because we have the black pen, and we don't really want to compete with that. Tell it there. It reminds me of um, using watercolor pencils. Remind me of those coloring books we used to have as kids, and they would have like the the uh, watercolor paint already impregnated on the paper and you just use a wet brush. And I think they were called like magic painting or magic coloring books or something, but they were so fun. And that's what using watercolor pencils reminds me of sometimes. Harken back to a simpler time. All right. If you have any rough, like that stuff that's too bold, just go over it with a wet brush and scrub it out and soften it down. Okay, so now we're going to work on our birch trees. Oh, something that's super handy to have. And I don't remember if I put it in the supply list or not. And it's wicked fancy. It's a piece of an old gift card. You just cut it up in a bunch of like just different shards. And this is so great for scratching lines and for scraping and applying paint just to give you a really random look. Um, Sometimes your brushes have these aquarelle handles, like the, the Majestic do, the Royal Magnical Menta and Zen watercolor ones do, their mixed media don't, but um, these lines are, these um, edges of your brushes are also meant for doing that, but I'm telling you, it does not beat a free old gift card that you've cut up into a bunch of pieces, because there's nothing better than that. So we're going to start off by taking some of our 
uh, gray. There's this blue gray color because once you've selected your palette and you've got a good assortment of, of uh, pencils, I don't recommend grabbing more pencils. I recommend using what you already have and keep working from that. So I'm gonna start by putting putting the um, some of this down along one edge and I'm gonna go with the left side. And then I'm gonna very, very gently put some on the right side, but not as much on the right as the left. Because this is a cylindrical object, having a little shadow on either side, on both sides is gonna give it that roundness. Okay, and we want our trees to feel round and not flat. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. And very light pressure, you don't wanna, you don't wanna scrape it. Now, this tree is behind that one. So we're gonna do a little bit more shadow on the bottom of this tree here to push it behind. And then we'll do the same over here. Don't worry if you've got any pigment on top of the trees, they'll scrub, it'll, you can scrub it out a little bit. So don't let that, don't let that bother you. And then I'm gonna overlap a little bit of the brown right on top of the blue gray. And that's gonna just neutralize it a little bit. That brown is gonna, cause brown is basically a desaturated orange. So the orange components of that brown is gonna turn the blue components of the gray into a more neutral gray. Best way to learn color theory is to get out your supplies and mix colors and play and experiment. People worry about getting started wrong or getting started out on the wrong foot. That shouldn't happen. I think that if you, um, experimenting is gonna be the best, best thing for you. Oh, before I get too far too, you might wanna sharpen your gray pencil because we will want to get some really dark marks. So I'm just sharpening that over my trash can with a hand sharpener. All right, I'm gonna go back to the flat brush and I am going to liquefy. I'm just kind of tapping it along the edge just to liquefy it to begin with. So don't worry, I know it looks real harsh. Don't worry, we're not gonna leave it like that. Okay, then I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna wipe off that barrel as always. My brush is fairly wet though. And now I'm going to brush up over it like this and soften that edge and help it blend across. And I might have to go in there and drag it in a little bit and that's fine. And give us that nice soft blend. And that highlight in the center gives it that roundness. Do the same, I'm gonna actually gonna turn this around the opposite side because I'm right-handed and it's easier for me to approach it this way. On this side, I think I just need to liquefy it. All right, so now we have a rounded tree. And now I'm gonna grab that pencil we just sharpened and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna throw in some lines. Look how I'm curving my lines though. So they make the tree look more like a cylinder. And we're on wet paper here, so it's gonna just grab my pigment without really any force. I don't really wanna force if I don't have to, I'd rather just have the, uh, the wet paper grab my pigment. Because once you make scrapey lines in there, they're, they're for keeps. Okay, now if I don't have enough, uh, enough happening here, if I feel like I need more texture, this is when I go in with a credit card scraper and this is going to be those lines for keeps when I go in and start scraping lines. Again, those kind of curved lines. And it will kind of scrape some paint out of the way and it will make some colors look darker if I'm going into wet paint. But the real magic kind of happens when I go in with some paint on top. So what I'm going to do is make myself a little palette, use a little bit of yellow ochre and use a little bit of our our um, crimson and maybe just a smidgen of yellow. Might not even need any, but I'm gonna, gonna put it there. Gonna wet my brush, I'm gonna pick up the yellow ochre first and I'm just gonna do a few little smooshes of paint. Really I'm watering down this crimson quite a bit. I almost want it just like a peach color and I'm gonna bring it into some of that uh, yellow ochre on the masking tape palette. 
You can actually um, take a, like an old plastic palette you don't care about anymore, and you can sand it with a piece of sandpaper and make yourself a palette that you can scribble your watercolor pencils onto. That's a nice way to get a little more use out of your supplies. Because you can use them like watercolor paints. If you don't have watercolor paints, it gives you something else to do with those. All right. If you want the edges of your tree darker, you can go ahead and you can add some of the blue and brown mix. Now, if I'm going too fast for you, remember, you can catch the replay tomorrow. Um, so paint at your pace. Don't feel like you've got to rush to keep up with me. Oh, now I just hit water onto my painting from my uh, for my water bucket. If you ever do that and you notice it right away, just blot it right away. If the water sits and you blot it after a few minutes, you could end up with like a white spot on your paper, um, which isn't the end of the world. But if you do see that you have uh, that that's happened, then go ahead and um, and go ahead and, and lift it up. Now with these little trees back here, all I'm going to do is just liquefy the colors. That's really all I need to do there. I don't need to get that soft blend as long as I've got, you know, the darker on the edges. I can do them both at one time. But you could do a whole page full of birch trees like that and just have a ball playing with your scrapey tools and, and uh, seeing what kind of colors look pretty on top. Move back in with the black, with the dark gray, the uh, blue gray color, and just draw some little more lines in there. They won't be as dark as the ones that we did in pen, but it's gonna give us that extra dimension. That looks really nice. And I don't think I'll put extra color on those because I want those kind of pushed back and I want this, this one here to come forward. All right, now I'm gonna scribble some more of this gray out and a little more of the brown, and then we're gonna make some branches to finish off our birch trees. Um, and this is a point where I will use a brown brush. And this is just a little, uh, well, it's a number two uh, round brush, but I would say it looks more like what a typical number one was. You know, there's not absolute standards in uh, brush manufacturing. Like this is pretty small for a number two. I'm mixing those together, making myself a nice paint. And I'm gonna go and throw in some branches. Now I do a couple drawn on with pen, so I'll do those first. Now I'm gonna hold my clipboard up so you can see how my brush is hitting the paper. You want, you want it to be at a 90 degree angle with the paper. That's gonna give you your best control with a round brush. So if I wanna put a branch here, I'm gonna keep that brush at a 90 degree angle with my paper so I can control. If I keep it on its tip, I'm gonna have a fine line. If I press, I can get a thicker line. And you can put as many or as few branches as you like, but try to pull some of them off the edge of the paper because that helps with the depth and scale and makes it look more natural. And have them coming off from everywhere, some from behind the back side of the tree, some from the middle, some from the edge, because tree, but the one thing I see a lot on um, paintings is a lot of times people just have branches coming out the left side and the right side of the tree, nothing from behind and nothing from the front. And you can throw a few on this guy too. Don't do too much work on the ones in back because they are in back. They are not going to be as prominent. You can also pull some little branches from the rocks because a lot of times you have these little offshoots. They're kind of low. Um, and you can you can fuss with that and you can put more as well as you go along. You don't, you know. You could probably putter with this painting for a while because it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to build your landscapes and add more depth, add more colors. So it's not done until you say it's done. All right, and now I am going to go in with that filbert and you could actually use a round brush if you want to. Um, and I'm gonna paint some leaves on there. I'm gonna take the, take quite a bit of the spring green and some of the lemon yellow.
Oh, by the way, I am call I am pressing pretty firmly to, to lay down that on the palette. I'm not being too gentle there. And I'm just gonna pick up some of those colors, making a watercolor paint like, and I'm just gonna kind of tap on some leaves. Now I did not outline those in the pattern because you're just going to want to tap on your leaves wherever you want them to go and then you can go in with your pen afterwards and do your outlining like I did like I did here I just want to outline some of them I wanted to be more prominent or if you don't like the look of the outline you can skip it it's completely up to you and don't forget to let some of those those leaves be in front of the the um the trunk of the tree. If you want a little more structure to them, you can go in with a pencil and um, or darken them, that's up to you. I really, maybe in front of the tree if you wanted to, but I don't think it really gives you too much of a benefit other than letting you put down a little more pigment. But again, that's up to you. And then you can also go in at this point and you know, further on as you're you maybe puttering along on this painting on your own in the future, you can go in and deepen up any of these colors that you wanna deepen up. Like I said, there's no rush. You can keep playing with this painting as long as you want to. That's a wonderful thing about the watercolor pencils is that you can keep layering up and you don't have to be done with it until you're happy with the outcome. And you actually, you might want to go in and just layer up your pencils and not liquefy them. You don't have to liquefy them. One of the fun things about the texture that you can get with the watercolor pencils on watercolor paper is that it will grab the the hills, so the, the watercolor paper is a, a combination of hills and valleys. The paper is, is rough. And if you color over with your pencils, you can deposit more paint on the hills where you have pretty much a flat application right now. We've liquefied it and it's all gone into the hills and valleys. So if you go in and then you're like using the pencil on its edge and you're pretty much hitting the hills only and the valleys are left with whatever you have had on there before, you're going to have a two-tone look and it's going to give you some lovely texture, which looks like trees in the distance. You know, you see that texture of leaves. So you can go in with a dry application just like you would with any regular color pencil, any regular meaning like non-water soluble color pencil. Now, one final thing that you might want to do is you might want to add some white into your water, maybe some white ripples. And um, I think the best way to do this to get lots of pigment would be to just scribble your white onto your um, onto your masking tape or a palette if you have one and pick it up and then go in and you could put any white little reflections. They're not going to be super bright. If you have the ink tense pan paints, the, the uh, antique white in that is really opaque and lovely. You could also use a gel pen if you wanted to, or some white gouache paint or white acrylic, whatever you have, whatever you have for a white medium at home should be fine. But that's something else you could do to brighten up if you wanted to bring back some more of the bright white of the paper. And, uh, and like I said, you can keep building up and adding until you're really happy with the level of color and saturation that you have. Now, one final thing that I want to mention before we go today is how to remove your tape. Now, keep it taped down till you're absolutely ready to, um, to be done painting. It's, it's just so much easier to work on this while you got the tape down. But when you're done, when you're ready to remove the tape, one tip that I have, the first tip is make sure your painting is dry. If your painting is not dry, it's going to rip when you pull the tape up. And this is just inexpensive masking tape. Um, then if you're still worried that it might rip, heat the tape up with a hairdryer or a heat tool. The heat loosens the adhesive and makes it easier to remove. It's also a great tip if you buy open stock pencils and you have the, the label stuck on the pencil, you can heat it up really quick and then you can pull off that label a lot easier without any sticky left behind or price tags for that matter. And then when you pull your tape off, you want to pull it away from the surface, okay? So you're kind of pulling it away at an angle and that will make it much easier to remove. 
I'm not sure why that works, but it just, I think it's because you're not pulling into the edge of the paper. And that is, in a nutshell, how we paint our landscape with watercolor pencils. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I certainly did. So this is the one I did spend longer on my demo piece. So I'll probably go in and actually add more colors to this, build it up until I've got a little more saturation here. That's completely up to you. And I just wanted to mention that because um, I think it's really important to disclose if you spend more time on something, because I think often we look at our work as, um, you know, and as a student and we say, how come mine doesn't look as finished as my teachers? Well, the teacher had more time to develop it when she wasn't teaching or when he wasn't teaching. So, you know, this had a little bit more time, maybe an extra half hour on it. So keep that in mind as you're working on yours and try not to, um, to compare. And if you want to hold your picture up in front of the camera, I can see a bunch of the cameras up on the top of the screen. I would love to have a peek at what you're working on. So let me see. Okay. All right. Oh my, Glenn, that looks fantastic. Oh, I'm seeing Becky's up there. Oh, that looks great. Oh, we have two Becky's. Oh, wonderful. Elise, that looks great. Wow, you guys really painted quickly. I don't know how many people are act, are in right now. I think we have hundreds. So I'm just going to scroll through. And um, wow, you guys doing so well. Donna, that looks amazing. Oh my goodness. Guys, would you mind tagging me if you post this on Instagram? Because these are so pretty. I want to see them closer. Vicky, that looks awesome. Oh, wow, guys. Please tag me if you post these on Facebook or Instagram. I want to see them closer. They look so good. You guys did so great in such a short period of time. I know it can be, it can be tough to follow along live. And wow, Carrie, that looks great. Oh my goodness. I know I can't mention everyone. I'm just going through Melinda. That's awesome. Oh, good job, Bruce. Oh, wow. Please tag Derwent Art underscore US also because we would love to reshare your work. So oh. we're so excited to see what you guys created. Oh, it's so fun. I know um, that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend. I'm just going to be scrolling uh, and looking at your beautiful landscapes. Oh my gosh. Guys, you did an awesome job. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so happy that um, so many of you want to paint together. It really, um, it really makes me feel good to do a project like this. Um, as a reminder, Derwin underscore US is where you can follow and tag your work. And remember, they're having giveaways. Also, make it with Michaels if you want to tag them as well or, or hashtag it so they can see that as well. Um, everyone loves to share and everyone loves to see all of the beautiful artwork that you're doing. Um, and I guess that's it for today. It is a little after two, so I'm sure you guys all have a lot of things to do. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Oh, one other thing. I just want to share this because when I would have my supplies ready like to, to paint this project with you today, they were sitting in a jar and I thought they were so cute. So I decided to paint them with my Derwent Inktense pan paints. So um, I encourage you to look around your studio, look at your supplies just laying on your table. Sometimes that is really inspiring. And I really want to encourage you to draw every day, draw what you see. And there is a tutorial for this on my YouTube channel. If you would like to paint along with me for that, that took about an hour. Um, so, you know, or if you just want some company in the background where you're drawing what's in your space. Uh, thanks to Derwent and to Michaels for getting us all together today. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.